the Build a Burrito project is an assignment aimed at giving you some experience using nested conditionals. In this project, the user will enter their name and a text number and then choose a burrito size in a group box. We have mutually exclusive radio buttons there. And then another group box, the left of that, they'll choose their filling. Vegetarian, chicken, green chili pork, or red chili beef. And you'll see the prices listed there for the small and the large. Then they can add something into their burrito using check boxes in the step three group box. And that is grilled onions, bell peppers, jalapenos, and cheese. And again, you'll see the prices for the small and the large. And then step four, we can add on uh, a side of refried beans, a side of rice, have the burrito deep fried for chimichanga, or we can cover it with red sauce, green sauce, and melted cheese. And again, there's different prices there for small and large for those last three options. As they make their selections, the total price should change with every change of a radio button or checkbox. And then, to get some more experience using message boxes and with a little bit longer prompt, when they click the Submit Order button, it will reiterate what they ordered as far as the size, the filling, the mix-ins, and the add-ons, and repeat their text number so they can verify that it's all correct before they click OK. Here's the project running. So I can choose a size, a filling, additions that I want to put into the burrito. So maybe grilled onions and jalapenos. Let's add some cheese. And then the add-ons. I want refried beans, but not rice. And let's deep fry it. And let's put melted cheese on top. As I'm making changes to any of these, notice that the price is reflecting the changes. When I've got the burrito configured, I click Submit Order, and I am told, in this case, that we are preparing your small chicken burrito with grilled onions, jalapenos, cheese mixed in, and the add-ons are refried beans, deep fried, and melted cheese. The project instructions are in Canvas. You'll see the alignment, how this relates to the course, Screenshot similar to what I just showed you. The assignment itself. The requirements. You must use nested conditionals in this application. And all radio buttons and checkboxes will use the same event handler. So one event handler handles the check changed event of all of those. Here's the storyboard for the user interface. I'll present a bit larger view of this. A little bit later in the video. Give you some code, some code snippets and tips, and you'll submit this with your weekly reflection. I'd recommend creating some class level or global variables for the price, the burrito, the mix-ins, and the add-ons, and set those initially to whatever you have set when the project first comes up so that they correspond. I set this up with the large radio button checked, the green chili checked, green grilled onions checked, and then the refried beans and rice checked. So those are the options for the price, the burrito, the mix-ins, and the add-ons. So if I just click the submit order, I would get the correct order based on the defaults. Here's some sample message boxes. So again, the title is going to be thank you and their name. And then the prompt is going to consist of five lines. We are preparing your, your burrito with the size and the filling listed there with whatever the mix-ins are mixed in, and then an add-ins colon wherever the add-ons are, blank line, and then we will text the text number when it is ready. As I said, you must use a nested if-else. So I would use an if-else looking at whether they've chosen small or large, and then the nested would be the filling. So we'd have a small vegetarian and a small chicken and a small green chili and a small red chili, and then the else being the, the large choice being checked, they would also have vegetarian chicken, pork, and beef chili. I would set the mix-ins and the add-ons variable to nothing and none. Those would be the default. If they choose nothing, we want those to be the responses in the message box. Then you can use sequential if structures, or here I use sequential ternary structures to look at to modify the price and the mix-ins based on what is checked. And do the same thing for the add-ons. Then I would 
look at what the add-ons and the mix-ins are, and if they if they include anything more than nothing or none, you want to strip out the nothing and the none and the common space after those using substring. And then finally here is a little bit larger view of that storyboard. I'm gonna suggest you pause the video here and try this on your own and then come back and I'll show you my code review. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the interface simply because I gave you the storyboard. Notice that I used Hungarian notation for all the radio buttons with RB and the checkboxes of CHK. There are two, four, 10, 16 total checkboxes and radio buttons, all of which should share the same check changed event. And that check changed event will update the total price using nested conditionals and then some sequential conditionals or sequential ternaries. So the two things you'll code here are those checkboxes and radio buttons, that one event, the check changed, that check changed event for all of those, and then the submit order button. Let me jump over to the code. So as I suggested, I would start with four variables that are class level, price, burrito, mix-ins, and add-ons, and set those to whatever the default settings are that you have checked in the interface. And then here's the code for that submit button. It's gonna display our message box with the user's choices. I'm gonna dim prompt with using a string builder and can, an interpolated string of dollar sign, we're preparing your, and whatever the value of burrito is, burrito exclamation mark, and a carriage return line feed. If mixins equals nothing, and that's not true, so here I'm using the not operator, so if not mixins equals nothing, so something beyond that, then I want to get rid of nothing and the comma and the space after it. You'll see I add a comma and a space for each item added. So I'm going to strip out that first one. So we're just less left with the first item and then any subsequent items. I'm going to do the same thing for the add-ons. Here, though, I just as a demonstration, I used a ternary expression instead of an if and if. You could do the same for the, the mix-ins, or you could use an if and if for the add-ons. Either way, we want to get rid of that nothing and none if there are things that follow it. And then for my prompt, which is my string builder object, I'm going to append a line of with whatever the mixins are mixed in, append another line with add-ons colon space and whatever the add-ons are, and append another line. And here I'm going to add a, very, a carriage return line feed to give myself a blank line first, and then we will text whatever the text property is of the txt text text box when it is ready. And then my message box that show will be the prompt to string. Remember that the string builder is not a string, so I need to convert it to a string. And then for the title, simply dollar sign thank you, and then whatever the name was in TXT name. Now I mentioned, I think we probably wanna change one more thing here, and that is to make the message box buttons dot okay cancel. We're not coding their response. That would be probably the next step. But if they were to click cancel, we don't want to send anything to the chef. If they click OK, we do want to send it to the chef. Now let's take a look at the change, the check changed event for all of those radio buttons and check boxes. I'm going to set mix-ins to nothing and add-ons to none. And then here is my nested conditionals. I'm going to start looking at the size. So if RB small is checked, then I have a nested conditional of an if, else if, else, and if. We're going to look and see what the filling is and then set the size and the burrito name accordingly. Then also nested are the ternary expressions I use. You can use sequential if and if statements if you prefer, but I'm changing the price and the mixins based on what is checked. So if, they, if CHK onions is checked, then I'm going to increase that price by, by 50 cents. Looking at just the small burrito here. Otherwise, nothing. And then I'm going to add grilled, grilled onions, actually with a comma and a space preceding it, concatenating it to mix-ins. And then do the same thing for the bell peppers, the jalapenos, and the cheese. And then here are my add-ons. Same thing. So if, if chk refried beans that checked is true, 
I don't need to specify the equals true here because this is either a false or true value since it's a Boolean variable. I'm going to add a, a comma space refried beans, otherwise adding nothing. So again, each of these are preceded by a comma and a space, and I'm going to change the price and the add-ons variable for rice, deep fried, red sauce, green sauce, and melted cheese. Here's my else. So if they didn't click the, the small burrito size, they must have clicked the large. So this will take care of the large. It's the default here. And again, just checking to see what the filling is, changing the price and the burrito accordingly, and then changing the price for the mix-ins and the add-ons, as well as the identification of those items. Once I'm done with the end if, I want to show that new price as a currency with two decimals into lbltotal.txt. That's my code, and again, I hope you enjoyed this project and found it both challenging and fun. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the Programming Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.